All right, so I've been asked the question on uh, the connection between anxiety and illness. Um, and so, um, from Hawkins' work and muscle testing, and general mu muscle testing work, whenever there's any negative emotion, uh, the muscles in the body go weak. So when there's um, when the emotions of shame, guilt, apathy, fear, pride, which are all the uh, negative emotions, are being experienced, if you check someone's arm strength, uh, they the arm strength goes weak. So that means that the acupuncture meridians um, are collapsing. They're not functioning. Not uh, they're not uh, delivering energy. Now the Chinese, and this is also uh, affirmed through muscle testing, have known for thousands of years that different emotions are related to different meridians, like you have the heart meridian, the kidney meridian, uh, the immune system meridians. And, they're, and they've labeled different emotions which, are, uh, which tend to go, go uh, when you feel them, like uh, anger, which is a form of anxiety or guilt or shame. Um, I think I think anger and stress and frustration, I think that's the one that's linked to the heart meridian. So you get people who are very very angry and stressed out. Uh, like for example, I know that uh, certain positions in the stock market, the people that used to work on the trading floors and uh, I forgot what they used to wear, colourful jackets and uh, do the uh, I don't know whatever they did. They were under a lot of stress and they used to have a lot of heart attacks. So that would make sense, you know, if you're under a lot of psychological stress and pressure and anger, then uh, and frustration that uh, the energy to the heart meridian would be blocked consistently and get a heart attack and die. Um, and for example, my one was uh, I've got kidney failure and there's a meridian for the kidneys. And I went to see an acupuncturist uh, once I got into spirituality after my near death spiritual experience. Because Hawkins had mentioned uh, acupuncture is, is useful. So I went to this guy and uh, he was, you know, I was trying to get a cheap session. He was a te teacher instructing how to do it to his students. And uh, so he just stuck the needles in. And as I was walking out the room, the instructor came to me and whispered in my ear that the kidneys are related to fear in Chinese medicine, the kidney meridian. So uh, he was trying to tell me that you know, you've probably been in a lot of fear, which has blocked your energy to your kidneys. And so you've just uh, taken out your kidneys through just wallowing in fear for years. He didn't say that, but I understood what he meant. That's what he said. And so I got the message, you know, and so these emotions, so, the, so everything, uh, everything, the most powerful energy field is the spiritual. That's the most powerful, that's the orchestrator of everything. Now, if you're out of balance in the spiritual realm for too long, then it can start to manifest in the emotional realm. And if you still, uh, for example, if you ha if you hold this, if you're holding a spiritual belief or, uh, of untruth for long enough, and it leads to emotions like anger, or fear, or stress, or anxiety, for too long, you'll start to be in emotional imbalance. And then if you allow that emotional balance to hold on for like months and years at an extreme level, then you're likely to get physical symptoms. You know, like, the, like for example, certain, you know, certain emotions I think would be related to cancers. And uh, certain meridians, you know, certain organs have various emotions related to them, as identified through Chinese medicine. But generally holding any negative emotion for a long time, obviously you're already emotionally ill, and then eventually it will manifest physically. Now, that's one aspect which is related to, so yes, um, uh, you know, anxiety would uh, eventually manifest if, if held long enough. Now, if you, have, if you were in, in, in peace most of your life and you had anxiety for two minutes, it wouldn't manifest as any illness. It hasn't got time for the disruption to, to be starting to orchestrate on the, on the physical. You'd have to do that for a long time. Before that, so you want to clear up your belief systems, uh, which disconnect you from infinite truth, and infinite light, and infinite love, and infinite healing. Otherwise, when you're holding limiting beliefs, you can go into anger, guilt, shame, anxiety, or tendency. Usually, you're holding a lot of limiting beliefs, which then create a lot of problems. 
Uh, also, there's the levels of karma as well, as to um, negative emotions, negative beliefs, guilt, and the manifestation of Ill illnesses, and one of them being karmic return, uh, which if you use muscle testing or do past life hypnother regression, hypnotherapy, or even regression into this lifetime, which is very common by hypnotherapists, which I used to do as a hypnotherapist, even though I didn't do the past life regression. So you do something like, oh, every time, um, every time you get close to water, you have a panic attack. Okay, so I'm going to put you into hypnosis. You're going to walk. You're going to go down an elevator from ten to one, and when the doors open, you will go to the memory where the start of this fear and terror of water in this life to my past lifetime first came. And you find out, for example, that um, uh, you know they drowned on a, on the Titanic, for example, in the past lifetime. So every time they see water. They go into thing, you know. So then you do, um, then you can do you do a forgiveness process in hypnotherapy to forgive whatever happened, what they took on, whatever happened to them. They need to forgive and release. And then usually the phobia, if it's healed properly, is released. So that's how. Or you could do it with we could do it with muscle testing. See a good kinesiologist, and they'll say, okay, where does this come? Is it a past life thing? You know, with water, it is. Is it dry, drowning? Yes. Uh, is this affirmation or this prayer, this counseling belief going to delete that program? And you check it out with muscle testing. Is it well? Okay, here's your diagnosis. Uh, uh, you know, for example, I forgive or I cancel, whatever it is. Uh, uh, and uh, you need to do that, you know, 10 billion times <laughs> for two years and you should clear it out of your system. Only joking, but you never know what the diagnosis is. It depends how heavy it is of how much prayer and counseling you have to do. So, um, so there, there can be um, a karmic level and would, why the illness comes back. Uh, there can also be an emotional level, which acupuncture will give some clues to. But generally speaking, when you hold guilt for having done something, um, you know, unless you clear it or forgive it or cancel the belief, it, it will just manifest either physically or through some occurrence in life to try and clear it out through come come doing as like i like to call it because you haven't cleared it it comes and bites you on the ass and you have to go through it uh, yeah so um so for example like i you know, like hawkins talked about you know you can also make guesstimates with clearing illnesses with the anti-karma prayer uh, which i found really helpful from hawkins uh, so, like, I've been suffering breath sort of asthmatic breathing problems. So what does that feel like? It feels like I'm being suffocated. So what could I have done to another person in this lifetime or another that would mean that I have an illness, which means I feel like I'm suffocating and can't breathe at night? Well, you know, maybe I suffocated somebody, <laughs> either metaphorically or literally. You know, like, maybe I was, you know, I used to like going around sort of putting polythene bags on people. I don't know what I did. <laughs> That's a pretty horrible karma. I mean, well, why did I do that? That's this dumb, dumb thing. I've told myself, like, don't, don't, don't try and kill people with a plastic bag. Or maybe I suffocated them, uh, you know, just psychologically. You know, just being around severe, people were just, like, feeling like they couldn't breathe. You know, and so I've now got, you know, this illness has come back. So I, then I just make a guess. I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who suffocated others in this lifetime or other lifetimes. And I keep doing that as, a, as an intuitive guess that that's probably why I've manifested an illness where I feel like I'm suffocating. And maybe I'll find in the last time, last time, maybe in this lifetime, do you feel like I'm suffocating? Yeah, you always suffocate me when you're around. Okay, so that makes sense why I've got this illness, you know, and manifesting in me. So that can be another way of tracking down and leaving. You can also use counseling police just to, if you don't even know why you've got an illness, just track it. You can use counseling anxiety. I counsel my generalized anxiety in the infinite being. I counsel my anxiety related to being in this relationship with this person, an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Or I, I pray for a miracle, I pray for a miracle or, uh, and for the Holy Spirit to reveal to me in truth uh, what is the, the hidden meaning of this illness or this anxiety in my life. Please reveal it to me and then just do the prayer and just wait for an intuitive thought to, for it to be revealed to you. 
<coughs> what what's the deep core message of having anxiety or an illness that's manifesting out of the anxiety? Well, that's very <coughs> very very common. It, usually, people who are um, have illnesses as they get well, if they have any kind of anxiety or stress, it usually flares up the illness. And different people have different illnesses with a flare. Like, for example, with me, uh, what do I get? Well, at the moment, when I get stressed, what do I get? You know, it's been different things. Like in the past, when I'd get stressed, I'd have a gout attack in my feet, even though that's been cleared through cancelling. So now I think when I get stressed, um, yeah, I, I do think. I think sometimes it, exact, it just it increases my asthmatic breathing problems if I feel stressed. So it's like, that's my weak link. So any kind of spiritual disconnection, bonk. Okay, and other people might have feet problems or other people might have itchy skin or whatever it is. It just depends. Is when, you, when you're not kept in top, tip, tip, top spiritual peace and you get disconnected, then that illness will sort of whack you on the head just to remind you you need to get back into spiritually, spiritual balance. So, um, you know, so I've said quite a bit, you know, but um, the Course talks about um, guilt, and Hawkins talks about guilt, you know. That's, I mean, I, w I wouldn't say guilt, I would just say all of the negative emotions are going to manifest something, whether you're in fear, guilt, shame. If you're in shame all the time, then you're going to manifest something ugly. And guilt, you know, those are some of the darker emotions. Uh, if you're angry, you're going to manifest eventually something, like a heart attack, which is not nice. Or you can get cancers, which are quite severe. Uh, usually when the guilt... Now, the intensity of an illness is related to the level of emotions held, repressed emotions. So if you feel, like, extremely, extremely guilty, you're going to manifest a horrific, possibly life-threatening illness. Whereas, for example, if you had just have mild guilt, you know, you probably, like, get a cold every few months, and that's about as bad as it gets, you know. You haven't got enough guilt that you deserve to die from a, a, a kill a life-threatening illness that kills you in, in one week. You'd have to have a lot of negative repressed stuff and limiting beliefs for you to manifest as something that horrific. Uh, so, um, you know, so the, the level of severity is going to also have, um, you know, uh, a meaning behind it in terms of beliefs and levels of repressed feelings and the limiting beliefs that are uh, held in place. So that would be, um, yeah, so that's a, just a general talk on anxiety and illness. Um, you know, for example, I did I did actually a video course on it uh, until Udemy decided that it wasn't perfect enough and delisted it, bless them, on, on this actually. And in that one I said, you know, like, uh, it's kind of obvious stuff, but I think it's really, you know, like if you feel uh, back pain, can have the metaphor of not feeling supported, you know, uh, you know, or... Uh, uh, you know, like, uh, or um, a lot of these things we have like metaphoric, like, you know, uh, uh, getting back pain can mean either I don't feel supported or maybe I didn't support other people and it's coming back to, to pay it. So there are often, the, the metaphors are often symbolic as to where and how you get the illness. So you can often up and pray for it. You know, there's a meaning behind what type of illness and the severity of illness and the emotions and the limiting beliefs. Um, so you sort of, um, if you've got a good kinesiologist or if you've got a good past life hypnotherapist, or you can just pray to the Holy Spirit to save some money and not go <laughs> and give your cash out. And, <laughs> like, oh, Holy Spirit, can I save some money? Just you give me the remedy and tell me what I need to do. So uh, that's, yeah, that's a general talk on that. <laughs>